Welcome to Modern Musings, conversations with the maiden, mother, and crone, looking at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hello, welcome back to our podcast. I am Amber Jones, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Kristen Hessler and Cindy Murray. Hello. Howdy. And today we have a pretty fun topic. It's one of my most favorite topics, which is why I'm posting. I'm just kidding. Um, it's one of my most favorite topics. You it's did one put of, it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my most favorite things, and that is art. I love art, too. Me, art. too. Yeah, all three of us love art. So it, it's going to be a fun topic today because... You know, I mean, and the the title of it is, What is Art? Well, I have a couple of definitions here, you know, from the dictionary. The art is, art is the expression of, or application of human creative skill and imagination. Mm-hmm. That's one definition. Another definition is various branches of creative activity. Mm-hmm. Such as visual art, music, literature, everything like. And then another definition I have is art is a visual visual object or experience consciously created through an expression of skill or imagination. And I just love that because art is full of imagination. And, and that leaves it yeah. wide open as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. I like those like there very are so broad many. terms. They're yeah. not leaving anything out. Yeah, yeah, there there are so many interpretations of art. One person's art could be another person's trash. You know, well, I mean, honestly, <laughs> like you like Truth. you you could pick up trash and turn it into art. Yeah, um, people do it. Art is wonderful. I live every day in awe of art, and I live. Uh, you know, I work at a visual arts school. I love theater. I love dance. I love music. Mm-hmm. I love poetry. I love everything that has to do with art. I love visual art. Um, I actually uh, recently went on a cruise for my honeymoon, and I uh, became an art collector. Well, I mean, I already was an art collector, mm-hmm. but I um, bought some art Mm-hmm. on a cruise that I went on my honeymoon several months ago. So um, so what I guess what I'm saying is I don't have a favorite type of art. And mm-hmm. I, but I want to pose this question to you, ladies. What is your favorite type of art? That's a really tough question. I, I am a fan of all different kinds of art. Um I I love visual arts of all kinds and I'm I like interactive art, I like painting, I like sculpture. I am I love the imagination and the skill that it takes to create art. And my husband and I used to love going to interactive art exhibits uh, here in Dallas. Uh, this is a cultural center um, for art of all different kinds, art, music, dance. Um, you know, there's, there's just tons of great museums and galleries here and uh, little small exhibits. And I'm, I just, I love all of it. I, you know, I I will even go as far as to say, you know, we went to the Judd Museum mm-hmm. um, last summer and um, in Marfa, and while no, no, that's a lot really of his stuff is not my taste necessarily, I can thoroughly appreciate some of the things that we saw there, particularly like the artist who did the light stuff mm-hmm. uh, with the neon lights and stuff. It was not but something. Some would argue with, is that art like well, neon lights or just 
boxes, such mm-hmm. as Judd's. Right. Geometric boxes. Geometric yeah, yeah, boxes. Yeah, I have a good topic to talk well, that. and that, and that is but, a big question. And, you know, they often say that art is in the beh- the eye of the beholder. Mm-hmm. Um, Judd spent many, many years working on those geometric boxes they, um, they, out of different materials and different colors. And, I mean, there is a whole airplane hangar yeah. full of those little boxes. And there's Multiple a whole. Multiple buildings. I mean, here and there's right. other yeah, places. Yeah, there's yeah. a whole, like, area of just, like, those boxes sitting outside in the open. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that was the concrete ones. Yeah, yeah the concrete boxes. But, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, he had them, like, scattered all out, all over the city in oh, different yeah. buildings. Yes, but, the, um, but, but then there was that airplane hangar that had nothing but those in it the boxes probably yeah like yeah. 30 to a 50 in there i don't know how yeah many. i don't know how many there are just different variations of the same metal cubes but with different angles missing or added or you know changed out in them and you know like i say it's not necessarily my my I'm not going to say it's not my idea of art because I think it is art. I just think it's not necessarily my aesthetic. Mm -hmm. To me, I felt like Judd's art, his like 50,000 different cubes was not much different than someone practicing it, it's drawing practice. hands over, over and, and over, over and over, and over again. again. Yeah. It was yes. just on a bigger scale because it was sculpture and it was installation art. Yes. So you're seeing like him practicing over and over and over again and studying the cube and its many yes. forms because yes. the cube is not just this six-sided thing. It's mm-hmm. also right. yes. well, so different. Well, and he would cut a corner off and add a the slope placement to it or where whatever. it is in a room and how and big the, the room is and the lighting in the room and the metal and the material that, it's made that he on. made. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't even all metal. Some yeah. of it was acrylic and mm-hmm. other things, you know. So, and sometimes it was painted or whatever. And so, yeah, I it is. It was a study. It was like he was doing a study, um, and and just you know creating mm-hmm. the same thing over and over in different ways to perfect his his art and you know if you think of this as a sculpture that's um installed outside of a building or like maybe a bank lobby or something Mm -hmm. like that if you walked into a bank lobby and you saw a roughly cubic sculpture with like some weird angles and maybe Mm -hmm. some plexiglass or whatever on it you would say that's an art sculpture so why would it not be just because he made lots and lots of them and they were all very similar? And that's that whole thing, that 70% rule, like that it's only art if you only make one of them and it's perfect. That's right. not true because anyone who actually does art knows that it takes thousands and millions of them to right. get well and that's like photography yeah uh yeah definitely on the photography when you when i the... took photography uh, you know photography classes you i was to... told that you take a hundred photographs to get mm-hmm. one usable photograph and you know when you're doing that kind of thing when you go have your portrait done they take hundreds of por- sometimes click 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 with you in the same position Mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that they catch you with your eyes open and not blinking and you're, you know, whatever. And then they'll turn you a little bit. They'll, you know, they'll take hundreds of pictures to get you that set of portraits that you're looking for. Um, Same thing with a, like a journalistic photographer, Mm -hmm. they go to a concert or a, a sports event or uh, a house fire or a car wreck or whatever and they're taking hundreds of pictures to get that one picture for the newspaper or whatever you know so well, I mean you kind of have to like a, a lot of the people's art you know that's in the museum or that they're selling that's not their first try on that exactly they didn't just exactly um, how many copies or renditions of the Mona Lisa were there before we got the one that's hanging in the mm. Louvre, you know. Um, and what's behind the Mona Lisa? And what's behind it? What did they paint what? over? Yeah, mm-hmm. which is yeah. Uh, when we toured the Dallas Museum of Art, um, 
we uh, there was an exhibit many years ago. Um, artists who used photography to aid in their um, their art, and so they would like have the the artists or the, have the models pose, and then they would um, sketch it out like several times based on what they had them posed, and then they would like they would take a photograph and then they would sketch from the photograph and then they would paint it. And then they, and you know, canvas costs a lot of money, but you know, back in, I mean, it still does, you know, you, if you are a prolific painter, you go through hundreds of dollars worth of canvases. So it's not unreasonable to think that you could just paint over one and paint something else on top of it or, redo that you know you get halfway through the painting and you don't like the colors you chose or maybe you want the head to be turned a little bit differently in the portrait or whatever and you just scrape it off and and start all over so um and then you know we see in the works of uh da vinci you know many times like you're talking about the study of the hands the study of you know figure drawing of of different body parts and things over any any sketch artist has a sketchbook full of the same sketch over uh -huh. and over and over again where they're mm -hmm. practicing and 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 really to me that's what art is art is not this final product that is out there that the art is the artistry it's the definition that she just gave you which is the act of the actually act of doing. creating yeah. something can you read that first one again um the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It has nothing in the definition that says like it's valued. It's very good it's or it costs. Yeah. yeah. And and this this goes to another question because I have I want to have this argument. I've had I've had people tell me multiple times that so and so is not an artist. Um, because of the type of art they do or and I've actually been treated that way myself well, that's that I, person's definition of art well and, they don't, okay okay yeah. hold on a minute though okay, okay. so so I've I've actually been to a craft guild uh here in Dallas and yes that was um they they really consider themselves more fine arts and 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 there isn't there's art there's fine art um maybe that's the difference that some people want to delineate there. and then there's arts and crafts and then there's craft work and craft work but um i was treated very poorly by these people because they were blowing glass and binding books and creating sculpture and um firing you know clay pots or whatever but i was looking for a space to come in and teach um, paper crafting and mm -hmm. they just looked totally down their noses at me um, and so I was I just gave up on that idea but I also have people who are um, that I know who are um, who are artists who look at other people that I know who profess to be artists and I call myself an artist I have never been classically trained i have not gone to art school i've had photography classes i had art in high school and but i practice artistry of varying different kinds i paint i draw um i don't consider myself to be ultra talented but i enjoy doing it i've created things that have received compliments and i I call myself an artist because I create things that are artistic in nature. My, uh, one of the other people that I know does this and yet is people tell her that she's not an artist. Um, maybe not even as much to her face, but I hear it sometimes, you know, and I'm like, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that judgment. Because um, when I, 
I and I looked it up. So I, I was like, when can you call yourself an artist? And there are this is so hotly debated. It's just like what is art? Who is an artist? So here's one. This uh, it says um, on United Art Space. When is it okay to call myself an artist? And this says a person who practices or performs any of the creative arts, such as a sculptor, filmmaker, actor, or dancer. There's no mention of qualifications, how much money you make, or the years of experience you have. It's quite acceptable to call yourself an artist, even if you don't make a living or are trained, right? You, don't, you only need to make one because if you make, let's say, a clay pot, for instance, mm -hmm. set it on the table and someone says, and the artist who made this was so-and-so. Right. You make one, you are an artist. Right, and so maybe just of that so one thing, but still maybe, an artist. Maybe mm -hmm. this person's art is not your kind of art. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's but uh, it is art eye to of the other beholder, people, and it right. is in the eye of the beholder. So, I mean, people might look at some of my stuff and say that's not art, but I do collage. It um, fits that definition, Absolutely. and it fits that yeah, definition. Fits so I'm thinking it is, and um, you're, and you know, there's, there's just. I, I don't know. I am not. So in art appreciation, this is the the age old question. What is art? Um, and this is where the debate gets people really fired up because right. there is this who is it that you can judge, you know, what is art and right. who determines what is art and what is not? Well, and, and technically, it, based on Amber's definition, nobody except for the person who creates it is the judge of whether or not it's art or not. Right. But according to people who have been classically trained in fine art, and that's why I say maybe it's that distinction between art and fine art that the who because their idea is whether art. it is whether it is saleable, you know, whether someone is willing to buy it, mm -hmm. the art critics are who decides whether it is art. Right. And I'm like, well, but that's like saying, if you applied that to other things, like music, what is music, mm -hmm. right? So um, if I play Mary Little, Had a Little Lamb, is that music? If I yes. sing that to my child, is that music? But you know, somebody else can say it's not music because it's only intended for little and kids. You haven't made a recorded album or been on stage for thousands of people. Right. Then right. it's not music. It's not value. You know, it's not valued. So it's not music. So you would not do that. You would not apply that terminology to music. So why would you apply that to art? Yeah. Does That's that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. art has really two definitions. It's a give and take relationship mm -hmm. when you're talking about, like, is art art to me? That is your definition. And then there's, like, the global definition, like, Amber's. That's, right. in general, art, any art. I think and if then anyone you calls have, it art, then it, right, it, someone absolutely. can look at it and right. see that it's art. And I think that is why people debate on whether or not something is art because they have their own definition of what they consider right. art right. and they are applying their personal definition to that perspective. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's, it is, it's a give and a take. There is the artist, the person creating it. And then there is the person receiving the art right. by looking at it, who is determining is this art. Right. Because, if you also take into consideration your definition, read it again. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm making you read it again. <laughs> I think we should go over it multiple yeah. times. The it expression in, right? or application of human creative skill and imagination. A vehicle. Think about a car. Uh -huh. Is that not an imagination and expression by creating something that you came up Artists with in drew your that mind? Car. Someone, someone invented yes, someone the car probably and said, "Ooh, I want someone to." Someone probably get in took a piece of clay or wood or something else and carved out the shape right. of that mm -hmm. car because but, they make because they do that right. But someone said, "Ooh, I want to be able to move from this place to this place without using my feet." Right? They use yeah. their imagination 
and ingenuity and created a car. Wouldn't also a car be, be art? Art. Yes. Just as a building sculpture or not clothing. Sculpture, sorry, architecture. Architecture is art. Actually, no, architecture. yes, clothing. Well, that's why I'm saying, but some people don't understand that everything is art. If it is created, it is art. And yes. Yeah. If in your imagination. Basically, it is saying music like is a human. Music yes, is art. A human Film creating is it is art because we Books are doing are art. what we they see are. in our mind. We are making it out of mm -hmm. the elements, right? right. So architecture this house if it's designed is or created mm -hmm. it's art yeah yeah right so maybe it's manufactured and mass produced at some point like clothing but the original but art, piece, fine art can also be mass produced absolutely. because they, Definitely. they make art prints, prints. Yes. it is still art if it's on a piece of poster that was printed yeah, is it art yes because someone painted it they created it they made a copy of it and they and yeah. you have it hanging and on your wall to appreciate that yes. in if you're willing to see that definition as just that, then you see the world differently because everything that you look at is artwork. Oh, that's true. Is yeah. art. Mm -hmm. And somebody put their passion into it. Right, right. And yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. And do you call yourself an artist? I, I do call myself an artist. That I, was a really hard thing for me to be able to say that. It, it took me a long time to say that um, because I would say I'm a crafter. And I don't even, I don't even often call myself a talented crafter. You know, I'm just a, but after some time I started calling myself an artist. I believe that I am an artist because what I build um, with paper, with mixed media, with my collage, um, with three-dimensional paper things i i call them art i quilt i embroidery i paint i draw and to see that and the quilting like that's art too like uh you can enter that stuff to win prizes like uh the for the and you get rewarded for the artistry yeah, the artistry it. the intricate nature of mm -hmm. things such as that like um because you use elements of design Mm -hmm. in creating those things yeah so yeah by that definition pretty much a lot of things i mean even food is art culinary oh. yeah. culinary, culinary like art. a like a you go to a fancy restaurant and they that presentation artfully put it on the plate yes food yes. is art as well yes so, so we've we've had the debate. What is what is the artist's name, Kristen? We've talked oh, about yes. this before. Oh yes, okay. So let me tell you about some art that is probably like the most argumented of art, which is Dada or Dadaism, mm -hmm. Dadaism, and uh, probably the most uh, popular one is uh, Marcel Duchamp, Duchamp, I believe. Um, it's basically it's called fountain and he took a urinal it's 1917 so uh not like the urinals of today um but he took a urinal turned it on its side and signed his name on it mm -hmm. and the whole purpose of dadaism is that it's absurd and to argue what is art literally right. that, that was is... literally his point was mm -hmm. that I'm calling this art, therefore it is it art. It is art. And it makes me irritated in some ways because I'm like, that's not art. You didn't make it. But when I go back to my original statement earlier. But, but that he saw someone, it from a different perspective. He And someone else created it. that. Someone, you know, the urinal, it is ceramic. It was created. Right. But it was also presented in a different in way. In a different way, and and that sometimes is uh, like with photography. Um, what makes it art? You know, look taking a photo of something from a different angle or in a different mm -hmm. light, mm -hmm. or you know, looking at something in a different way, and that 
that is true of, of all art. A great artist is someone who can look at something, a great artist, not just an artist, but a great artist, can look at something and present it in a way that you've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. And that that is what makes it great art because you see things that you never would have noticed or or it gives you perspective or it gives you an emotional uh response to it and that a lot of times i think is is part of the artistry um or what defines art is that you that it captures an emotion or something like that or or it makes the viewer have an emotion of some sort even if it's like oh my god this is the most disgusting thing i've ever seen right yeah so um that really is what makes art what it is is and that's also what makes the debate is that it evokes like that response right so like the cup the hairy cup oh yeah i think i blogged about that um when we were doing cups i think that was like maybe our first season mm -hmm. and yeah uh, that cup was or no, that was season two. That okay. was actually season two. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so Oppenheim's cup is like she made like a plate in a cup. And I think there's also a spoon. It's like a saucer and mm -hmm. a cup. Mm -hmm. And it's like lined with fur. And the whole purpose for her was that when you look at that cup, it evokes like a response because you think about like drinking out of it and mm -hmm. the hair tickling your nose or like what it would feel like to eat out of that. Um, that's what that kind of art does is it gives you that response. And I think that's what most people, when they try to define art, they are, only wanting to give credit to art when it gives them a pleasant response oh yes yes but there mm -hmm. is that um uh any somatic response which is anything that that causes your body to have a response you know that like that ASMR. is ASMR. right right so so even that is a form of art there is a whole genre of art geared at creating somatic response um, like you said ASMR sometimes and not all ASMR is a pleasant response some people listen for the um, listen or watch or whatever for the horrifying or the disgust or or whatever what have you um, that is a whole whole other genre of it uh, I remember seeing paintings at the um, Lubbock Arts Festival. Uh, every year they would always have one and there would be art on display that you could buy or whatever. And, and I remember there was one that was like a, I, I, could, I can't remember the artist's name, the name of the artwork, but it was a huge piece. It was a huge painting and it just looked like bloody, <laughs> basically. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was disgusting, but it, that was one of the pieces of art that they had on display and it, and I'm not going to say it was good or bad. I mean, it took artistry to create that piece of art because you can't just slap a bunch of red paint on and make people think that looks like a bloody nightmare, you know, mm -hmm. um, it took skill to create that. And and that was the response that they were trying to get out of it. So mm -hmm. is it my taste in art? Absolutely not. I would never, uh, you know, go in search of that or hang that on my wall or anything like that. But I can appreciate the skill of the artist who created it. Yeah. And I, I think that's the, the thing there. I, I don't know. Like I say, going back to the people, you know, that call certain kind of artists art and some are not. I, 
maybe th- maybe it's not so much that you should call them not artist or that it's not art. Maybe it's just not your style or your taste. Um, you know, um, I've had people argue that a photograph is not good because it doesn't have the rule of thirds. But there's always rules. Rules are always created to be broken. Uh, a good artist knows when to break the rules and do something. And if you see a photo that's taken without the rule, without using the rule of thirds, which um, in, in case you don't know, it's like dividing up the the field in the shape of a tic-tac-toe. And you want to kind of go for those overlapping lines, the corners where... Um, That's where you want your eye to be drawn to. So the rule is to put the photo into one of these little quadrants or towards one of those quadrants. But if someone breaks that rule and puts the subject in the middle of the photo, does that mean it's not a photo? Of course not. Right. It may not be your taste of a photo, may not be a good photo, but it's still a photo. Yeah. So if it's art... It's still art. Right. It, yes. Uh, that's interesting, too, because um, minimalism is an argument of art that some people can't see as art because it's devoid of personal expression. Right. Um, it's just using the form and, like, the elements and principles of design. Uh-huh. So it's you know, maybe like the minimalism of, um, oh man, I lost his name. The guy we saw in uh, Marfa. Judd. Judd, thanks. His art didn't have faces. Right. It didn't have nature. It didn't have personality. It didn't have personality. It was just... Objects. You experiencing the object in the space that it was in because he gave room Right, All, and, and that's that was one of the that things was to think the, about was installation like, art is is that yes. it's created for the space it's in too. Yes, it, and his art like there was a lot of space in between each of these cubes. It's really hard to like imagine. Just like you said, it was an airplane hangar. One of them was an airplane hangar, and full it was of them. huge. Yes. And so there's all this negative space, the walk around mm-hmm. room, to view the art. And well, it was all planned out too, like the oh the yeah, space that's was the space part of is, the art. It is right. part of the it art. It was part of the art. Yes, and that was his whole point. That's why his house was the way it was yes. too. Yes, um, highly recommend the tours. They were very yeah, interesting. It was for me. I was so glad to see that artwork at that time in my life because I was really like getting into like the decluttering and stuff mm-hmm. and exploring what it was like to be a minimalist, and I wasn't intending on going to see a minimalist art you know like because mm-hmm. when i think of marfa i think of like southwest style art, yeah not well and there is a lot art. of that there too yeah, yeah but that was so present there yes. um that it really like it was really good to experience that you know like so far away from like the hubbub of the city mm-hmm. even it itself it's like a fractal i don't know i'm getting weird here but <laughs> his his minimalist art was out in the middle of nowhere and each piece of artwork had nowhere space around it like to yes. me that was really yeah. cool like the grand design of it out in the middle of nowhere in texas where there's like so much space right, right. instead of like new york where there's cram Crowd. space yeah. yeah so i feel like that was really cool to experience that and in that it evoked emotional response Right. Because it was devoid of emotional response. So I thought that was really cool Mm -hmm. about his artwork. Because even though, like, that was, you know, months and months and months ago, like, it's still... You still think about it. I still think about it. And I still see it. And I still feel from it. Just like the stupid urinal, it does the same thing. And the cup with the fur, I remember the first time I saw that art in a book and I was just like, oh, and it seemed like every time I opened yeah. my textbook, um, it, that picture was there. Like, 
<laughs> and it gave yeah. me like the chills. Like yeah. I will never you forget had a that piece of response yes. to it. Yes. And um to me like that is where you take art and make it fine art. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where people want to argue about what is art when they can when they can experience that. Right. Um and so I think that's where it the whole debate happens. And where some people might not see, like, the minimalism because they don't see the feeling, right. you know. And, like, that's why some people don't like the Mona Lisa. And they will argue that that's the worst piece of artwork. Like, people hate the Mona Lisa. Some right. people really hate it because it's not, like, all that beautiful. Right. You know. She's not all that pretty and mm -hmm. she wasn't smiling. And there's and no story. Yeah. There's no story to it. Which but, uh, I think that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, and I respect it. It's, um, you know, there's, you know, so many pieces of art that you don't need to know the story. If, look at the skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of the Mona Lisa, we were talking earlier about, um, was it one of a kind or were there many different, there were at least four different versions of Mona Lisa. That we know of. That we know of, and yeah. None know of them of. were smiling. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't tea. all painted probably. by Leonardo da Vinci either. He had many students that oh, painted yeah. for him. Oh yeah, oh so. yeah, and they worked they worked on his works and yeah. Um uh, just like um Michelangelo, he wasn't the only one who was painting at the Sistine Chapel. Um oh, yeah, he had many understudies who were, you know, he might sketch something out and then have them fill in or whatever and things like that. At just just like many uh, well-known authors have ghost writers, they'll they'll create the shell of the story and then say, write a few paragraphs of where they do this, you know, or whatever. And the ghost writer will write that part out. Um, George R. R. Martin is one of those. Um, he has a couple of ghost writers who help him write his uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones. So stuff, actually, so. speaking of that. Uh so there's three types, like main types of art. You have your visual arts, which mm -hmm. we've been talking about mostly: architecture, ceramics, drawing, right, filmmaking, photography, mm -hmm. and then you have um, literary arts, which is fiction, books, poetry, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then you have performing arts, which yes. is like dance, music, and theater. Yes. So, I think a lot of people too, when you say what is art, the first thing they think of is like a painting, painting or a yeah. sculpture. Yeah, and but. and actually, in uh, there are various combinations of those as well. So, like um, one of the things that we, my my husband and I used to like to go to uh, is interactive art exhibits. So it's a place where someone uh, let me let me try to give examples of some of the things we've done um a video screen a video is shot onto a shaped screen where like you stand in front of a camera and the video of your face is projected onto a face shaped sculpture on the wall um it's it distorts the way you look you know, but that's the interactive of the of art. Um, in the Discovery Gardens, the AT and T Discovery Garden in downtown Dallas, there is an interactive music and um, visual art. It's done with lights and mm -hmm. music, and when you touch or move near certain parts of this dome you're inside this little dome and when you touch or get near parts of it it plays notes and lights up different parts of the interior of this dome yeah um uh the one that had the face another interactive art that we uh saw there was a video shot down onto a uh like fiberglass boat bottom and the video that was being shown on it was of whales in the ocean swimming beautiful beautiful video and um it was overlaid with information about 
the plastics that are in our ocean. So the 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 boat bottom was recovered a piece of recovered Chinese trash that made it all the way to Hawaii, I believe. So it floated on the ocean all the way from China to Hawaii. And um and and our you know our our oceans are full of garbage and it was this whole video was talking about the um disaster of our environment with these microplastics and trash in the ocean and things like that um there have been uh teepees or yurts or something like that where you go inside and there's uh, music and stories being told uh, as you walk around inside of it. Um, there is currently being built. I I don't know if it's uh, if it's accessible now or not, or if it was a temporary installation. But there's a bridge crossing from Texas into Mexico, and there was I believe it was a Terry Allen in, installation. I may be wrong, so don't hate on me if I am, but it was uh, a whole interactive installation on this bridge um, connecting the U.S. to Mexico, um, and I don't remember any details of it, but it was like there were some audio pieces to it and, and um, talking about the connection between the two countries and things like that. So, uh, you know, that's a whole different kind of art because it's part performance, it's part um, visual. So there's, you know, there's there's that kind too. So, mm -hmm. and I, I love checking that stuff out because it's fascinating. But a lot of people would probably say they didn't consider that art. I don't know. Because it's not on a canvas on a wall. Right. Well, or it's not valued that, um, at thousands of dollars. It's something or, that can't be sold. Uh, right. Installation art is actually really interesting because once it you like it's pop, it pops up and it's then temporary art. it yeah. comes down and there's no like monetary mm -hmm. value of it because it no longer exists. Right. Well, and then you get into the whole idea of... Um, of um, non-fungible credits non-fungible uh oh god dad was talking about those like the most expensive artwork ever sold non-fungible tokens which are um digital um creations basically so um there's a there's an artist named beeple that my husband followed and he does a piece of uh artwork digital artwork every day and for the first uh he took the first five thousand of those and sold them as a non non-fungible token um it's called every days the first five thousand days and uh, it was a single, you know, purchase for all all of them as a non fungible token, and it's it is currently valued at sixty nine point three million dollars. And it's not even a piece of art that you can look at. This is just a token. I think you have a certificate that shows that you are the owner of this piece of digital artwork, and um, and it's a it's a mosaic i believe of all of those five thousand um pieces of art that he created that is just insane to me i mean i'm not saying it's not art because i've looked at the pieces he is a very talented illustrator um artist what a, yeah, graphic, art? you want to, graphic artist um it's it's fabulous but that is that's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. Well, and that's also something really to think about. Um, you know, graphic arts being considered art. You know, well, not that long ago they were not exactly. Yeah, cartooning and, was mm -hmm. not illustrations was, were not considered you were a art. cartoonist. Yes. Not, yeah. That's why I said cartoonist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, and it was anime. cartooning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anime actually, like, has only, like, recently gained, like, public respect, you know, in certain circles. Like, people considered it kids' cartoons. It was mm-hmm. actually, you know, I mean, a lot of stuff and... goes in. A lot of stuff goes into that type of art. So, oh, it yeah. should be considered art. Right. Yeah. A lot of thought... A lot of consideration, a lot of planning uh-huh. goes into that. Well, that type the, of thing. This piece that was sold by Beeple at uh, Christie's, the art auctioners, or was who sold it. Um, it represented thirteen years of daily pieces of art. Mm-hmm. Daily pieces of art. Think about that. Five thousand pieces of art one every day for 13 years Mm -hmm. yeah definitely when you think about all the work you would do every day for 13 years Mm -hmm. i'd like to get paid six million sixty something sixty nine million dollars yeah 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 very nice. Yeah. So here's a fun fact. Guess how old the youngest artist is. I have no idea. I know there was a young girl who was painting when she was like 12 or 13 and she was selling at the art auctions for quite a lot of money. Right now the current youngest artist alive is... Alita Andre, she was born in 2007, mm. and she began painting at nine months old. Oh, wow. And by two years old, she had her first art exhibit. Wow. Um, there's a different uh, child artist. What, um, what was her name again? Alita, A-E-L-I-T-A, and then last name Andre, A-N-D-R-E. I'll I'll put a link to that on the yeah heard it on the podcast. I'm mm-hmm. curious. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go look it up. Yeah, it's just crazy to think about. So like earlier, I was saying, you know, anything that human hands create is art, right? Well, let's like back it up. What about animals? Have you ever seen the? Elephant I have that seen paints? the elephants that paint. Is yes. that art? Or is that representation? It, I think it would depend. Depend. I would have to know. It would depend. I would have to have an understanding of where the painting originates. Is is the elephant just doing exactly what its trainer taught it to do, mm-hmm. or is it actually choosing colors and choosing to make these marks? So artists who go to art school, are they really artists or are they just... Well, no. <laughs> Sorry, because I just throw that out there. Because I just had to oh, no. play the Artists who go to art there. school are taught how to make the marks, just like the elephant right. would have to be taught how to make the marks. Right. But... Are they using they, their own They're judgment using their and decisions? own, their own um, skill and creativity. Is creativity possible so that's, in an animal? That is... That's the, That's the question. Is the animal actually creating? And that would be what makes it art. And that's what made me think about the child artist because is the child, is it luck that, you know, I think about Jackson Pollock and his paint splatters I, yeah. because some people debate is that art because he's just splattering paint, but he's using design you know, principles. Design principles. In doing that, yes. So in that sense, like, because some of the paint splatters don't fall in the right place, so they don't look appealing to the eye because those principles of design are what make you want to look at the artwork in the first place. Mm-hmm. So with the child's art at nine months old, you know, when they're using the paintbrush and they don't even really understand what they're doing, you know, mm-hmm. is their abstract painting just luck because the right colors and right shapes appear in the right place or is it something else good question good question so i I would have to see 
correct. What she does. Mm -hmm. And I would also, um, I, like I said, I would need to have an understanding of the process that went into it. You know, where she be guided by her parents to do the marks mm -hmm. in certain mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. um, you know, did they, did they select the colors for her and lay them out so that it was only pleasing colors? Mm -hmm. They're you, choosing the palette for her yes, and telling yes. her like, here, color this in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that that would be a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My um, art professor in college did not like happy trees. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he did not like Bob Ross. Right. Because Bob Ross, you know, was kind of like regurgitating the same like techniques over and over again. Right. And the same repetitious patterns and like he did a lot of things with like the paint knife where he would use the paint knife to lay the um big swap swaths of, yeah. yeah and uh, so my but actually now they think about it my high school art teacher didn't like bob ross either but i mean the kids always loved bob ross because we watched him on pbs growing up oh yeah that was yeah. happy tree that we were all just like, wow, I want to be Bob Ross. You right, know, I want to yeah. paint like him. And, uh, you know, he's kind of like a paint by numbers in a sense because he tells you, like, exactly where to put the tree mm -hmm. and how to paint. Mm -hmm. And you made me think of that um, because it's almost like kind of takes the creativity out of it if you're just copying him. But at the same time, like, his skill. But when you're in skill. art class, it, you know, your your art instructor is telling you the same thing. Yeah. You you all paint the same painting, but it's gonna look no, no. no. Actually, funny thing is that um, we always had uh, the still life. Yeah, there's always a still life. Yeah, in the classroom, and I can't tell you how many times my still life turned into a landscape. It was mm. always like bottles and hmm. stuff, and I would I would start. Because my high school art experience was we would have a model or a still life or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we, that was what we were told to do. Yeah. Sketch this. Mine always Use this technique to do this. Else. Use this <laughs> my, technique to do that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That we all, it was all the same. I mean, they all look different, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we were all doing the same subject. Yeah. The same materials. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like going to art, going to the wine, you know, what is it? Uh, painting with a twist or whatever. Because uh -huh. that's basically what art, yeah, what yeah. Bob Ross is, is painting with a twist without the twist. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, but yeah, that's, that's what a lot of art classes are for a lot of people is. Learning. But you're learning yeah. the techniques in, in doing that. You're learning the techniques. Here's how you make trees. Mm -hmm. Like this, you know. Yeah. Or one way to make trees or whatever. So, yeah. We all start from somewhere. Right. Right. I mean, you kind of have to. You don't, you're not just born with the ability right. to make fine art. No. 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 You, yeah. Even if you are self taught, you've um, probably learned from someone. You've either watch some YouTube videos or taken some art classes or something, you know, done some kind of class or something, or you've practiced a lot over, you know, decades. So it's, um, yeah. Speaking of decades, what's your favorite art era? Oh my goodness. I don't even, yeah, I don't know. Well, what's your favorite piece of artwork if you could just pick one like if if you were in charge of making sure this one piece of artwork survived the apocalypse what would you pick i have no clue <laughs> good me neither no <laughs> uh -huh. I I actually, actually yeah. you know what i think i i'm gonna take that back i think and i don't know if you remember seeing this um well i know you remember seeing it because we talk about it all the time um when you were in high school, Girl Scouts, 
uh, we went to the Kimball Art Museum to see a special exhibit, and I don't know the name of the exhibit or anything, um, or the name of any of it, but it was um, an exhibit of the documentation of the building of the Taj Mahal. Yes. And it was a series of like parchments or whatever. Um, the, the, the Raj who built the Taj Mahal, I guess he was a Raj, um, had also, um, got these artists to make a historical documentation of the building of the Taj Mahal. And so there's these parchments that came from this book or leaflets from the book or whatever um, of each of the steps in building the Taj Mahal. And they are hand painted in the most minute detail. Um, yeah, I remember that. It was like you want to just look at them with a magnifying well, glass. Well, yeah, you walk into the exhibit and they hand you a magnifying glass and you just walk around um, and look at these paintings on this parchment paper or whatever it was done on. And you, when you hold that magnifying glass up to it, you see the tiniest details like the, the um, tassels on these elephants that were so finely drawn. I can't even imagine. It's like the artists who draw on rice. Um, I know you've seen them at the fairs yeah. and stuff like that. Very similar to that. It was so microscopically detailed. It was amazing. The most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my entire life, literally. And I think that would, that probably, because it's still even 25 years later, <laughs> still evokes this joy this awe mm -hmm. for me ultimate respect of the art yeah yes and and it was multiple artists working on it but it was it like i said 25 years ago was when i saw this and um i will have to find the information about it and link that on the uh podcast if i can i don't know if i can um, but if I, if I can find it, I will, it, it is, I hope there's out there on the internet somewhere, um, some, some graphics of it somehow, because it, it really was awe inspiring. And I think that is probably, um, that one and a photograph that I saw in Marfa that, which we have talked about many times over mm -hmm. as well. Um, it was a black and white photo taken by, um, it was a, we were in a little boutique. Actually, it wasn't in Marfa. It was in Alpine, I believe. Um, yes. And it was a mother daughter ran this little boutique shop and the daughter was a photographer and artist and she had some photographs for sale. And this was uh, titled uh, Blue. I believe was what it was titled and it was a photograph. It was a self portrait of her, uh, like with the camera up under the bed, uh, pointing outwards under the bed. And she was laying on the floor looking under the bed and everything is in black and white except for her eye, which was the most beautiful color of blue. And it was very sad and telling it was like uh it wasn't she, not like she was looking under the bed for something lost it was like i'm lost and i want to be under that bed this is you know it was she was blue mm -hmm. and it was it was a beautiful photograph i still think about it from last summer I wish I'd bought it. I thought about it, but I didn't. But it was a beautiful photograph. And and that's that's another one that I find very very striking. And 
it may not have struck someone else in the same way, but it touched me. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I, I just loved it. What about you, Amber? The favorite artist or art or, artist or piece of art, piece of art. Oh, if you could gosh. just save one, which one would it be? Mm. Are we, uh, are we looking at what kind of art are we looking at? Like paintings? Any or? kind. Any kind. Oh gosh. Well, probably. <sighs> this is tough. <laughs> like if we're if we're gonna go with paintings, I would have to go with uh, everybody's favorite. Starry Va night. No, oh. no, actually, that's <laughs> not my favorite Van Gogh. <laughs> I was going to say Van Gogh's sunflowers, but like everybody's favorite artist, which is Van Gogh, like he's definitely, you know, the, there's those pop culture, like Bob Ross, pop culture artists mm -hmm. that everybody can recognize. What? Mm -hmm. But yes, Starry Night is really awesome. Yes. But um, I really he's like probably his. one of my favorite styles of art. Yeah. the So like anything postmodern, of course, in that... Um, in that type of style. But I do like uh, Warhol. I like his style. And I do like Pollock. Um, last time I went to the. Kimball Museum. There. Was some really cool Pollock paintings there. As well as Warhol paintings. They do have some Warhol paintings as well. So. Um, oh gosh. Um. Dolly, I, li I like Dolly, um, George O'Keefe, there are so many artists that I like that I couldn't even tell you, um, as far as written art, you know, we have to go with Poe, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or, uh, Shakespeare, yeah, I would say, like, if, if uh, you could do, like, uh, if art, if words, words are art, I would say Shakespeare's words in themselves, since he was such an inventor of words, mm -hmm. are art. Oh, yeah. So, for me, if it was a um, visual art uh, it would be Rembrandt's self-portrait. Um, Rembrandt is pretty probably awesome. Probably, like, not as detailed and fine art as like the Taj Mahal or Starry Night or something like that. But I love his self-portrait. I think it's called Staring, where he's he's making like a duck face. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. the time period to me, it's really interesting. He's got a lot of self-portraits, and um. I think that self-portrait is probably one of the hardest things to draw because you're the most critical of your own self. And he had so many, um, you know, he was really practicing, uh, you know, his skills with, with that. And there's the one that's called staring. He's actually like has a furrowed brow and he's like got his lips pursed. So he's kind of got like a, Mm -hmm. shocked look on his face and that's probably one of my favorite favorites just because it's different because in that time period like people didn't have funny faces in their portraits uh you know when people sat and got their paintings made they sat for hours and hours and so they were just kind of sitting there with a you know plain face you know um, and then if it was a visual art, like a performing arts or like graphic arts, I would say, um, probably Curse of the Golden Flower by Zhang Yimou, which is a movie, the Chinese, uh, film. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that movie is probably one of the most beautiful cinematography experiences I've ever had. Um, or Kira Kurosawa's Dreams. Uh, I really enjoyed that film as well because I thought those were very beautiful films. 
Um, hmm. The manpower for Jung Mo's movies, like thousands of people in his movies. Well, oh. and that's and like Akira Kurosawa. And, how, Some yeah. of his what yeah. was, um, stuff was that like one movie, fabulous. House of a Thousand Daggers or something like House that. House of Flying Daggers. House yeah. of Flying Daggers, same, yeah. Same guy, yeah. Yeah, and that would be that a beautiful mine, movie like mm-hmm. my most beautiful movie for sure. Yeah, I'm glad I introduced you to that one. Yes, you, should you go did. watch those movies if you haven't seen them. They are beautiful. You did introduce me to that one. Now I want to go home and watch those on my TV. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think we have pretty much covered art in all of our uh, random thought patterns of what art is. Uh, I would love to hear what everybody else thinks about it. Too. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Hit us up on uh, Facebook on our MMC chat. Check out our blogs. Give us a like and a share. Comment on our podcast. Let us know what your favorite type of art is. So what are we talking about next week? Next week we are talking about ways to lower stress. So, you know, we're probably going to come up with a top ten list or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, man, definitely stressful time of year, so... Isn't it always every time of year? <laughs> no. Nah, for a teacher, right. this time of year is the totally. most stressful yeah. time of year. Absolutely. Coming Beginning up of the, the year, of year is a piece of cake compared to testing season. The end and of the, the end year, of the year. Wrapping yeah. up and getting it all done before it's too late. And <laughs> yeah. everybody needs to pass. And yeah. So a million years of stress going on in my life right now. <clears throat> That sounds like a scary movie. A million years of stress. <laughs> right? That's going to be what, when I, wow. if I make a scary movie, that would be... that's going to be my art movement. I'm going to make a scary movie called A Million Years of Stress. Okay. That would be a horror. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Art house movie for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Get, get some somatic, uh, the imagery in there so people can oh all like, the Bruh. all the sounds that stress people out oh yeah and the yeah. the Ew. things just that leave them give feeling people creepy. the creeps yeah yes. the feelings just, like <laughs> sandpaper and fish it's it's just gonna be <laughs> one one big long ASMR movie because <laughs> oh, that can, stress is you me can out. do it in multi sensory things so you could have horrible smells too yeah and um and those sounds stress and, people out yes and, okay yeah hit me up <laughs> and help me fund this movie I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. Oh, it could, you you this would be low budget because I got all the years of stress for you right here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give them yeah. To you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna like I'm gonna film it with my phone camera and then. Oh, and make sure your hand is shaky so yeah. it stresses people out. <laughs> exactly. Oh gosh, I actually right. do have a video camera. I probably could. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we would like to thank. Creative Audio Tech for our music. And uh, we would also like to thank our listeners. Come back next week and help us relieve the stress. Bye. Bye. Bye.